Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and you're watching two neutron stars almost colliding with each other just like we actually did in real life back in August of 17th of 2017 when the scientists detected the first ever neutron star merger that resulted in some crazy scientific data. But in today's video what we're going to talk about is some of the things that we still don't understand and basically the questions that we are now asking about these types of events. Anyway, let's talk about this in more detail and welcome to What The Math. So, these two neutron stars are about to collide with each other. I'm going to kind of help them do that by decreasing their orbital parameters and causing them to basically collide with each other and create this incredibly beautiful kilonova, as it's now known as. Now, this unusual event uh, was detected in 2017 and explained some of the things about our universe, specifically where a lot of the heavy elements like gold, uh, platinum, and a lot of other heavier metals come from. We now know for as a fact for sure that they are created during these collisions. Now, what this event also created is at least five to six or maybe even more questions that we're just really baffled about. And mostly these questions have something to do with the physics and the understanding of the universe once again. But before that, let's actually go for a second to our own galaxy and imagine where this event actually occurred. So assuming that this is the Milky Way galaxy, this particular event happened approximately 130 million light years away from us. We're going to actually go and zoom out and place another galaxy at a distance of about 130-ish million light years. And so we're going to zoom out to a distance right around here. So this is where this event occurred. Now, just to give you kind of a comparison, the uh, infamous Andromeda galaxy is about 2.5 million light years away from us, whereas this galaxy where we observed the event is uh, close to about 50 times as far away. Anyway, so this particular event um, resulted in about two second long gamma ray bursts when the two neutron stars collided, but then several days of ultraviolet and uh, radio afterglow, something that we actually haven't uh, observed before. And I guess the first question that this kind of created is, well, you know, how often do these types of events occur? So if we have a binary neutron star in, for example, our own galaxy. Let's put one right here, crab pulsar. And let's put another object orbiting around it. Um, so how often, uh, what, uh, how likely is it going to actually um, create this unusual event? And well, it turns out it's a lot more likely than we think, specifically maybe 10 times more likely. If you do the math, uh, we think that within about 3 million light years away from our planet Earth, and that's of course very similar to the distance to Andromeda Galaxy, we could expect about one of these events occur occurring about every year. And that's actually pretty uh, significant. This means that if we look around our night sky in all directions, we should be seeing these neutron star collisions once per year within about uh, Andromeda distance away from us. But of course, this is still speculation and we'll need to study these events a little bit more before we can discover if this is actually what's happening here. Now, the second question that this creates is, um, well, what actually happened to those two neutron stars when they collided? So if I were to go to a new simulation here, and if I were to place once again, two neutron stars right next to each other, they would collide, but in Universe Sandbox, they kind of just destroy each other. They don't really create anything. They basically create uh, a supernova, or in, I guess in this case it should be called a kilonova. But in reality, there is uh, sort of the theory behind this, and we think that three possible things might happen. Either a neutron star, or a super, super powerful neutron star known as a magnetar, a very, very highly magnetic object, or possibly a black hole. Now, what actually happens to these objects is a big mystery to us, but it's very likely that when these two neutron stars collided, 
um, whatever was created is something we have never really seen before because if it was a black hole it wouldn't produce so much material and it wouldn't really produce so much energy if it was a neutron star it's very likely that it's a type of a neutron star we've never seen before so either we've actually just seen a creation of the most massive neutron star ever or a creation of one of the least massive black holes ever or something else that we've never seen before which by itself already makes this a pretty interesting event now next question that this uh, event created is in regards to what would happen if these two neutron stars were less massive or more massive? So once again, when these two neutron stars collided, one of them was a little bit more massive at 1.6 masses of the sun, and one of them was at about 1.1 masses of the sun. Now, we think that if they were a little bit more massive, as a matter of fact, if this other neutron star was actually also about 1.6 masses of the sun, they would actually reach the limit which would directly turn them into a black hole without really releasing much material. But we are really interested if that's actually what would happen. However, if the mass was a lot less, so if they were both about 1.1 masses of the sun, we think that the merger might have created a very powerful magnetar, which would actually um, maybe, just maybe stop spinning at some point, and once again create a very unusual black hole. So there's a lot of speculation here, and this of course raises a lot of questions about different types of neutron stars and what happens when they actually collide. Now, another question is actually in regards to the shape of uh, the actual emission that you're about to see. So if I were to stop these two objects from moving too far away from each other by making their velocity zero and zoom out a little bit, you would see that they're going to create a kind of a unusually shaped supernova that doesn't really go into all directions. As a matter of fact, if I stay here, I might not really see these emissions as well as if I, were, if I were right in front of it. We actually thought that this cone is very unidirectional. We thought it was only going to be visible from really uh, looking at it directly spot on. But turns out it's a lot more multidirectional than we anticipated. And you can even see it from the sides. And that is by itself, once again, kind of makes the physics a little bit more mysterious to us than we uh, we thought so we don't really understand how these emissions can be so multi-directional because our physical models suggest that this shouldn't really be spreading all over the place like you see right here it really should be more unidirectional and anyway let's go to the next unusual question and it's really in regards to the emissions that you see right here. And the question is, so what exactly causes so much material to be ejected from these collisions? We've detected at least 30 to maybe even 40 masses of Jupiter injected from here. Now, Jupiter is the most massive planet we have. Its mass is about 318 uh, masses of our own planet Earth. So there's Earth for comparison. But here we've detected not one, not two, but something like 40 masses of Jupiter. So this is how much more significant uh, this material is. This is how much more of it we've detected. And most of this was obviously things like heavy metals, uh, including gold, including plutonium, and a lot of other stuff that we now understand how, is, how it's been created. But once again, our actual original theories didn't anticipate so much stuff. We thought it was like an eighth or even a tenth of this. So the, these two neutron stars really surprise us. We don't know if it's because of the general relativity, we don't really know if it's because of some sort of magnetic field, if it's related to neutrino interaction, we have no idea. We just know that what we saw is not what we predicted. And so these are some of the more unusual questions that were basically raised by this very unusual event that we observed in 2017. Now, hopefully in the next few years, we'll be able to discover even more stuff about these collisions and we'll be able to finally understand what actually happened and what happens when these two types of objects collide with each other. And anyway, that's all I wanted to talk to you about in this video and hopefully you learned something from it and come back tomorrow to learn something else. I'll see you guys tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye bye. And if you still haven't subscribed, don't forget to subscribe and potentially support this channel on Patreon to help this channel grow and help me make better quality videos. 
Those animations that you've seen previously actually took a while to make and it's really difficult without some additional help. See you guys later. Bye bye.